Hey y'all, good to see you again. I know it's been a minute. I started videoing this uh, or filming this video for you a couple of days ago. And so I'm gonna show you some of what we were able to get done the other day. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you an update on the garden. So what? Okay, so we're going to show you what we do, and I know it's probably not news to any of y'all. In fact, I learned it from YouTube University. I can't exactly recall what channel I learned it from, but I learned it from, from there, and it's awesome. It works every time to keep the weeds suppressed and just makes gardening so much more of a pleasure. So we're going to show you how we do it, and then I'm going to show you how I plant the the plant starts that I've created what we use in order to give them the best opportunity to grow as possible all right here we go hey I end up getting this for Paula for Christmas it's an auger oh. come back out a lot easier than trying to dig it all out however deep you want okay what I'm gonna do you probably all know about it an auger whatever Drill down fairly deep. So then pull it back up and you got your hole. Yep, here we go. Right there. Right there. Yeah. And then this one, obviously, right in between. Right there. In between. Go. Oh. This is the one with the bird bath in the bottom. I don't I put that on the outside. Yeah, put it on the outside so I can use it. There you go. Yeah. Look how perfect of a hole it is. It's a good mm -hmm. hole. So, go ahead. A lot easier than digging it. Digging it out. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, mm -hmm. I like to put a little handful of bone meal, and then Kyle puts a handful of rabbit poo, and then I plant the tomato, and I'll show you how I plant that um, here in just a second. So for now. If I can get this open one-handed, which I, oh, I made it, yay. And I mean just a, just a small handful. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little. And that just helps to um, give some nutrients back if it rains real hard right after we do this. And Kyle puts in a big scoop or a big handful, his hands are big, of rabbit poo. Okay, and then, so all of these are my Romas, and then one, uh, the one Peron I was telling you guys about. So what you do is just kind of give it a little squeeze, it'll loosen it, hold on to the stem um, to pull it, and there it comes. And see how much it is so ready for planting. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna remove these bottom stems. Um, it's not needed and I want to bury it um, for as far up as I can. And I think I'm going to go on and remove this one and then we're going to bury it all the way up to just beneath this branch. And that's all it takes y'all and then we'll come back and we will secure these tomato plants in place so they don't fall over and that's it that's all it takes y'all and we will have a great harvest that's okay yeah okay. all right 
we will come back when we're all done with this and show you the results. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look over here in the greenhouse and see what's left. It might give you an idea of how much we were able to get done. Plus I need to get it open. So let's go in there and take a look. Oh, it's nice and warm in here this morning. Hello babies. Let's get this thing opened up. See if I can do it one-handed. Ha, huh, how about that? Okay, as you can see, I do still have some starts uh, left here. And I'm gonna get out here in the next day or two. But uh, and then the rest are gonna get potted up to be given away. These are the only plants that are potted up that are left. I mean, we do have a couple over here that um, are over here because they want to fall over. So these are all here for giveaway. I've got some uh, blue basil left. Now I might take these and go ahead and plant them because they are flowering. And I'm going to show you in a minute um, an issue that I've been seeing. So we've got a cucumber and a San Marzano and another one, another cucumber that is, and some more purple basil. There, there's not a whole lot um, left in the greenhouse and some of it I might end up having to put to use, but we'll see. We're going to take a look at a bed that we got done uh, a few weeks ago because it's not looking very great. And I'm not real sure what's going on with it because I have uh, never had an issue with anything to do with uh, tomatoes until now. Um, Although in theory I've researched and read and and different things, but I uh, I'm not exactly 100% sure. Let's go over here and get this one open as well. We do this one from the outside. If I can do this one-handed, that would be great. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this first bed that I was worried about. Oh my goodness, and I have not been out here yet today, but you guys, I think the diatomaceous earth I put on out here actually did what it needed to do. So I'm thrilled. This bed, if you recall, I think I told you about it before, but these are all really just fun tomatoes. Um, and almost every one of these, except over here on the end, were so decimated um, just yesterday, I think it was. I mean, they were looking like this, but worse. So I'm not real sure what was going on, but what I did was throw a whole bunch of diatomaceous earth all over, knowing it was gonna rain last night, and it really seems to have done the trick. And we do still have a little bit like this left that I need to pull off. Um, and I'll probably put some more diatomaceous earth out. So, uh, the snakes, by the way, remember, they're here to keep the birds off. We have some tomatoes that are coming on. Look at all these. Is that not amazing? And I'm not positive, but I think this one might be uh, Barry's Crazy Cherry, so that's great. And I do need to come back out and get some of them tied up some more because they are getting um, bigger and need tied up again. This is the ground cherries right here, and it is doing well. I've never uh, even eaten a ground cherry, so um, being able to to try this is great. Looks like we might have one getting ready. Oh, actually, it must be because it like totally just fell off in my hand. So um, we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. I did get some basil planted out here by the the tomatoes. It looks like this one kind of got hit with the rain really bad. I don't know if it'll make it, but that's okay. I do have other ones, and um, to get the ones out here f that are flowering would be best. So behind me, though, here is the first of Brian's uh, trellis system from Next Level Gardening. Finally getting to utilize that this year, so I'm really um, stoked about that again, Snake. And you're also gonna see some uh, stuff laying around because, <clears throat> excuse me, Kyle is getting the drip irrigation put in. So these are doing really well. I am <laughs> totally, obviously I am not pruning these the way I'm supposed to. I've gotta go back and look at that video of Brian's uh, to remember exactly how I'm supposed to. I have some basil planted over here as well. Some in there, over there. 
that's a good companion plant um that's a good companion plant for tomatoes and i saw it in brian's book from next level gardening and i will pop a photo of that book and put a link down in the description it's an awesome book y'all and well worth the money to spend on it just just for the knowledge alone is well done so i highly recommend it over here we got the pepper plants in um, i believe i did get footage on this if i did i'll pop it up um, and show you right here but we did we get a, we did get quite a number of peppers put in over here different varieties i have those written down um, but once again in the notorious fashion that i have i forgot that list to bring out here with me not a real big deal i think it'll be more interesting as it comes um, along and starts producing now one of the most interesting things about this bed is if you guys remember um when i did the starts and i was showing you the different varieties one of them was uh, a jalapeno called lemon drop and it's a yellow jalapeno and I didn't know and couldn't find out, does it come on yellow or is it like a bell pepper that's going to go ahead and be green and need to change colors? Well, it does indeed come on yellow. And here's a picture for you. This is in my sister's garden. We did a little seed exchange and I sent her some of those seeds and some of hers are coming on. And look at that. It's yellow. I'm so stoked about that. Okay, so over here um, is the second of Brian's trellises that we built last year. Um, we got these three in, and I ran out of strings. I need to uh, I need to get a few strings ordered again. Um, but for now, I think we're gonna just uh, end up. Excuse me, got an itch. I think we're just gonna put uh, another cattle panel right here because I have some other starts in there that I need to get going. Um, and I think some of them are going to come in here. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. So, but we do have the little remaining tomatoes that I have for this one in. And then I got to get some strings ordered from Brian. Uh, again, I'll put that link, if I can remember, I'll put that link in the description for you where you can uh, get these tomato strings uh, to put on this type of a trellis. And I'll uh, put a card up for you, should be coming up now. Um, as to why you would want to do this, Brian's got a great video out about it recently and I'll pop that up for you. Okay, so um, if you can remember, this is the tomato bed and this needs tied up really bad. This one is really flourishing. These are mostly Romas over here as a pair on, um, but these are all my paste tomatoes for the year. So I'm really excited. This is the Agastache. Um, and it's, look at the flowering, you guys. Isn't that cute? Anyway, this is the one that smells like root beer. And it is, oh my gosh, that is the best smelling plant ever. Um, and then we're looking at this yesterday with my neighbor. We found that we do have some Romas coming on. And these are still seeds from Melissa over at Good Simple Living. Um, they've got a garden going this year that looks wonderful already and i can pop a link up to their last video for you um, they showed getting their garden uh, planted all their transplants put out in the garden on a video they came out with yesterday so i'll get that popped up for you as well so but you can see how different that bed over there it's kind of looking like it's scraggly but it's coming back y'all so I'm, I'm pleased um, compared to this bed where this is much bushier and flourishing and to be fair most of these are determinate plants so it is going to be bushier where most of those are indeterminate especially like over on those strings those are indeterminate so they're not as bushy and that's the reason okay let's go take a look at the other end of the garden over here this bed has a, a variety of things. It's, it's got a couple of peppers in it. It's got some tomatoes in it. Um, as you can see, we've got a pepper plant that needs tied up. I think Kyle came out and tied these for me and he must have missed it. And I'm going to get this done before it breaks. But it's putting on some peppers, so that's awesome. Um, looks like we might need to do a treatment of diatomaceous earth over here as well because something's getting it. And then over here you see... Let me get my shadow off of here. It's got peppers coming on and it needs tied as well. 
Uh, I've got two cucumbers in over here this year, you guys, and it's got lots of tiny little flowers starting. I'm very excited about this. So that's going to be awesome. I love cucumbers, but Kyle hates them. So I haven't really uh, gotten to grow much. I grew some last year, um, but then m most of the garden was killed, which is why we have the cement in. Um, so, you know, because Kyle, bless him, he's trying to help, sprayed all the paths with weed killer, and didn't ask me about it first, and ultimately it killed most of the garden. So that's what happened last year. Um, I got a couple of cucumbers off that plant, but that was it before they all started dying. So that was unfortunate, but I've got two plants in this year and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, right here we have the lettuce bed. Um, the cattle panel is up because I'm getting prepared to put in the loofah and birdhouse gourds in this bed. This bed's going to be nothing but the gourds. Um, but for now, the lettuce is still here, so I don't have them planted just yet. Going to get them in the ground very soon, though, because as you can see, um, the arugula is bolting, which is fine. The chickens are really enjoying it, so I'll be happy to to share that with them. They are liking it, and I'm glad they, they do. So, over here is the corn bed, and it is doing spectacular, y'all. Look at this thing, it is busting. Um, I still need to help Kyle finish putting this up. This is where I wanted to put the loofah and I may still put the loofah over here and then just the birdhouse gourds over there. We'll see, I haven't decided 100%. Now, if you remember, we did an experiment this year where we started corn inside when I started all the other plants just to see would it work or would it would do well and here's, here's how it's doing and it's not good so as you can see i've got this one uh, this one and that one there was just the three i had started four but only three made it and while they do look nice uh they just didn't get a proper amount of germination because there was only three of them and so it's like as you might be able to see here there's no corn inside that husk so that's unfortunate um so it was worth doing the experimentation and I don't believe starting them inside is the thing to do. Now, possibly you could start them inside, um, but just not as early as I did. You really don't want them to get to that point where they're getting silks and then they don't have a chance to germinate. So I don't think I'll ever start these inside again, but it is probably a possibility that you could. It just you, the timing would need to be just absolutely perfect, um, which obviously mine wasn't. So. I'm excited about this corn. This is a little miniature ear of corn. Um, I'll try and get a picture and pop that on the screen here for you to show you again what this is. It's from, <coughs> excuse me, it's from Baker Creek at rareseeds.com. And um, I'll put a link in the description for you in case you're interested in that. Um, I'm super excited about this because if this works, this may be a way for me to grow all of our own corn, which is actually our favorite side vegetable. So fingers crossed y'all. I'm really hopeful. And the piece de resistance, I think is how it said, the tater bed. Now this was in the thumbnail because it is a jungle and it's turned out into, into an impromptu experiment. And the reason for that is um, I was down in my back for three weeks right after getting those tomatoes that um, are in those end beds over here, um, the two end beds. So right after we got those out, I we were gonna do the rest of it starting the next day. And the next day my back was out. And I mean, it was bad. I've never ever had my back go out this bad and it was out for a full three weeks. I'm still recovering as a matter of fact. Walking around is fine. Standing still, not so much. Bending over, definitely not so much. But it's on the mend, y'all. It is, it's on the mend. But that said, I was never able to heal these taters. They did not get healed. So the experiment is going to be, I'm not going to heal them then. At this point, we're gonna leave them and we're just gonna see what will the harvest look like compared to last year and the year before. Is it gonna be similar? Is it gonna be a ton less? I, you know, I don't really know. I'm gonna be expecting a ton less, um, but won't it be interesting to find out it's actually really just fine. So I'm doing this experiment 
impromptu, not planned, really for you guys because I know some of y'all that watch, you know, getting out there and hilling the taters, that's a little much. And it is, it's, it's a lot of work to continuously hill your taters. Um, but is it worth it? We're gonna find out. This is how they look. They're looking really good. Some of them are flowering. Um, they're looking really nice all the way down. So I'm hopeful. Um, I think we'll still get some taters, whether or not we get a lot. Oops, whether or not we get a lot, I don't know, but you know, I think it's worth the experiment just so we can all see together. Now, over here, this is a bed of weeds. <laughs> oh no, it was where I had the volunteer green bean plants coming up and went on and pulled those, pulled all the weeds that were in here. Um, I did plant one pepper over here. And the reason it is over here is because I don't want it over there by the peppers that are there. And the reason for that is that's a chara pita. And I got that from ba Baker Creek as well at rareseeds.com. And the reason I bought it is because Kyle had heard about this pepper. And I don't know if he watched it on a video or where, but he had heard about the pepper. And I went ahead and researched it and looked and it has been known to be the most expensive pepper because chefs have been paying a ton of money for this pepper. Maybe they still are. I really don't know. But what I do know is that these seeds became available on Baker Creek this year. And since Kyle is a, you know, super hot pepper fan, and that's what this is, is a super hot pepper. I went ahead and got those started. I only had one, one that survived. And so it's over here because I want to save seed from this pepper plant. And I don't want the other peppers germinating and making the seeds hybrids. So that's why it's over here. The rest of this bed, I have some special things gonna be happening in here, coming out in another video very soon. I promise, I promise very soon, like in a day or two. But anyway, the this bed i'll de-weed it again hoe it turn up the soil all of that good jazz and get it ready for what's going to go in here in the next day or two so excited for this bed this year y'all so i know that was a relatively quick update um i had intended more for this video and i do apologize things just get in the way um like back problems blah 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 you know life but I did want to, you know, catch you up on how the garden is going. I am looking at end of June, maybe at the latest end of June, should be starting to harvest. And then the main harvests are going to be coming around. And we're going to look at a new toy that we purchased this year. I call it a toy. But really, it's just, you know, you've seen, you all have seen it before. You'll see it again. But we are going to play with that when it comes to preserving food this year. I mean, I'm just excited for this year's garden, y'all. I mean, how can I not be? We're going to have drip irrigation. I have wonderful pathways to walk on that I don't have to trip. I know you're thinking trip on the hose, but that's not going to be as much of an issue once he is finished. I'm just excited. So excited, you guys. So until next time, you guys have a wonderful day. And look for um, the special. Oh, yeah, wait. Oh, one last thing. I wasn't going to use these blue tubs this year, but my uh, three sunflowers, oh my gosh, you guys, because I couldn't get them out of the seed starting tray, they almost died. It looks like two of them still might, but I might get one sunflower out of it. I think I might direct sow a couple more seeds um, that I have left yet that my sister sent me on our little seed exchange. I might go ahead and put them in here and just let them grow and have fun with them. Uh, it was my mama's favorite flower was the sunflower. So to have a sunflower growing in this garden, that'll make my mama and my sister very happy because she has grown sunflowers for years now to be able to share those photos with mama. So to be able to have a sunflower growing in this garden, yes, that'll be awesome. All right, guys, until next time, you take care. And thanks for coming along.